Hello and welcome to your new moon in Virgo reading. So this new moon is going to be tomorrow, Sunday, uh, September 9th of 2018. And always the new moon is a time of setting an intention. And this is a big one because I looked at the numbers behind this because it's 9-9, nine, nine, September 9th in the 11 year of 2018 when you add up all those digits together you come to the number 29 which reduces 2 plus 9 down to 11. So this new moon in Virgo is directly related to what we are being called to come forward as inspirational leaders and teachers. And I was digging a little deeper on this because we have the 9-9 and then we have the 11 energy with 2019 and then the whole of it adds up to 11 and so um, together there's the 11 energy is about this revelation of ourselves as bigger than I want to call it the vanilla that is right in front of our eyes there is so much more depth there is so much more to be revealed about each one of us and this is the year to really understand that we can't take things at face value and especially with ourselves. And then the 9-9 energy is about universal love. And here are some of the words that were coming through. Establishing the ultimate trust. Knowing what within ourselves can we trust? What is our base integrity? What can we trust in others and look to as a source of truth. Releasing of personality illusions. This speaks to what I was getting at in last week's free reading that I put up for the week about what if we break out of these illusions that we are our sun sign, for instance. What if we even, I mean at that time I was saying, what if you gravitated more towards your rising sign? But what if you just broke loose of all of that? Are we looking at our personality traits or the buckets of how we categorize ourselves? Are we looking at those as arguing for our limitations? Are we always becoming more? Are we expanding out to something new? So this is this releasing of like, not even bucketizing yourself, knowing that you are becoming all the time. And then this sense of opening, this sense of being open to receiving lots of new information coming up from within you, noticing how, depending on the way you're feeling within you, both emotionally and mentally, what then is being mirrored outside in your world to reflect back to you the essence of that truth that you are feeling within? Could you begin to look at the, the world that way, that maybe there is this mirroring effect? Could you begin to understand that energy, this is the way that energy works, is that we are a huge sphere of energy. We are vibrating and, and sending out signals like a huge radio tower. And then those events or those people or those feelings, those situations, are then tuning in to what we're putting out. There's no judgment in this. It simply is an opening to being aware that you do have some level of power here. You do have some level of control, if you want to call it that, around what you choose to create in this body vessel, in your energy sphere. So it's this opening to this. And again, all this goes back to this theme of universal love combined with the 11 energy of this revelation of a, a depth to you that is far more than just this surface value, okay? So if that wasn't enough, <laughs> the new moon will to be taking place, by the way, at 2.01 p.m., on Sunday the 9th, that's Eastern time. So it is the time of setting intention for this cycle. But I just wanna exclaim again how important this new moon is 
Virgo is the sign of perfecting. It is the sign of great craftsmanship. It's a diligence. Um, it's a mastery. And it is very much about being of service to other people. By honing your craftsmanship, you become of service. How may I serve to not only have the revelation of what is special and unique about you as an individual, each of us, that revelation of these inner depths and being willing to put that out into the world, but also doing it from a place of universal love, of knowing that it's okay to trust, that it's okay to be open, that it's okay to let go of these very strict guidelines that we have been operating within. And so as I was saying, if that isn't enough about the importance of this, here is your symbol. It's exactly 17 degrees of Virgo. Exactly when this happens. And here it is, very simply, three words. A volcanic eruption. Something from within you that is your inner firepower. It is, I want to use what my license plate now says, wildfire. This is the wild within, and the element of fire is about our inner passion. It is about the spirit that lives within us. And when it comes up, it can singe if it, if it comes up too fast, too hard, too overwhelming. It can burn everything to the ground, and maybe that's necessary sometimes. And then it can also come up in a more measured way that allows you to step into more and more and more of what lights you up, what is your passion. And I guarantee that whatever that really is for you, it is something that is of service to humanity in some way. If you are an artist, you are absolutely of service. You have very something very special to communicate through your artworks, whatever that may be. Um, if it is connecting to uh, a certain passion, no matter what it is, um, it could be that you just really, really love chess, <laughs> playing chess. What you do is you bring that passion and that it automatically lifts your vibration and that is the gift that you give to the world. So in essence, it almost becomes not about the thing that gives you passion. It's about the fact of how it emanates through this huge sphere that you are. And therefore, that only brings more good, more like it to you, but also you share that with the world. It's a two-way street. So this volcanic eruption is a time of embracing what is that inner wildfire? What is that wild within that is so ready to come forward this year? Have you had any insights into that in this 11 year of 2018? Have you, have you even been interested in being open to receiving signs of what that might be? Or are you afraid? Because we can walk the edge with something like a volcanic eruption it can feel really really scary but it can also change your whole world too not necessarily in a bad way so I want to get to the cards here I wanted to keep this message very clean because I'm not wanting to spoon feed you all of this part of these readings is you intuiting what it is for you specifically because these are general readings so I I can't spell out all the details but I feel like these cards will give us a sense of the direction of what within, that what is this volcanic eruption that is ready to come forward. And it gives us a general, very broad brush kind of a direction, a theme to delve into as we look at this new moon. And this is a time of you setting intention for how can I use the highest vibration of what a volcanic eruption is? It is a resetting. It is something that has been pushed down for far too long. And it's ready to come forward. 
and the perfection, the perfecting um, vibration and the fine craftsmanship, the mastery that is Virgo is, is willing to help you bring it up and out and ground it, meaning bring it to life. Because Virgo is very, very good at that. It, Virgo energy takes a really big concept or perhaps a really big project and breaks it down into bite-sized steps. And so first I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. It gets that granular. And that's the way we, we make this happen. We, you can't eat an elephant in one bite. So Virgo knows how to let you use the powers of the earth. It is an earth sign to be able to make that manifest in your life, to bring it forward in a tangible way, but always in service to greater humanity, bringing forward this inner revelation so that it exudes this universal love which is the fuel for all of our development on this planet in its purest form. So those who picked the first card, this is the Angel Tarot deck. You have Major Arcana card, the Emperor, Archangel Michael. This is that royal blue energy. It cuts like a sword. Michael is known as cutting away what no longer serves, cutting the cords of the past letting go of all that has kept you trapped. And most of all, I want to encourage all of us to think about how we trap ourselves. That's what came through to me as I was looking at the 9-9 energy for September 9th, this releasing personality illusions that we are only this, like I am only a Pisces. Oh no, there is way more. For me, that's way too vanilla. That's why I love astrology charts. It, it gives you many, many dimensions and different viewpoints and perspectives to consider. And different ones pop up at different times in your life, depending on the transiting planets around that. Just for example. So this says, organization and logic. Hello, Virgo. Structure and discipline, leadership. And remember, the 11 energy is about becoming the inspirational leader. It is first in the pack. And so, noting with this new moon, what is it? I feel like there is, um, because always with the one energy, when we're thinking about one, one, um, with the one, it's about this new inspiration that is looking to come forward. And I just want to say, what if that is the part of your leadership coming forward here? What if you are built on inspiration as your bedrock? What if that is what is looking to come up and out in some form? But inspiration, the firepower within, this wild within, will not come up and forward if we are too boxed in and only looking at this through the eyes of logic because it's too tight. That's the way I'm, I'm literally feeling that in my body. I feel like I'm being pushed into a box. Um, and Archangel Michael, you know, if you, this calls to you, is a good one to call upon as a helper in being able to come to a new level of your own emperorship, your own leadership, that is not about, it can bring organization. There's nothing wrong with organization. However, when it becomes too bound in organization and too bound in this logically has to make sense and I have to follow it in this order, bing, 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 and I can't do it any other way. I'm going to be your cheerleader to say, oh no, <laughs> you need to follow what is coming up within you and maybe your order looks like bing, 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 bing. Maybe it's, it, it doesn't look like a linear line. Maybe you're learning of whatever this is. You know, if you're delving into a new subject and you're feeling like you want to start studying something, that's Virgo energy is very good for that too. Um, 
It brings a diligence, don't forget. Just don't, don't allow yourself to, to follow in the footsteps of what everybody else has done necessarily. Unless that feels so spot on to you that it would feel totally off if you didn't do it that way. But notice, again, your energy, your, your wholeness of who you are tells you through your reactions, through your emotional state, through the mental thoughts that are coming to you. If you are open and aware, you will know if you feel this resistance. This is how I slowly, you know, along my journey am coming to realize how blessed we all are to have this built-in kind of alarm system, if you will. Not to, I mean, certainly our ego tries to keep us safe. It's not about a safety thing. Your emotions and your, your mental activity, but particularly your emotions, that's very strong for me. Tell me when I feel this level of resistance energy that goes beyond just feeling nervous about something. It's literally like holding me back from doing something because it doesn't feel right. And it's a time of opening up to that. This is, this is the level. We're talking about a volcanic eruption. There is something down under the surface, this magma, I think that's what it's called. Um, this, this unrest under the surface that is ready to come up. It's ready to come out. And could that be that you're just following the other rules or a set path that others have set up before you? Or there's been expectation that you're going to do this, this, and this? And could that be that you're ready to break out of that and do it differently? Because I will always, always encourage you to do that. If it... If you don't feel right in your body, if it feels like you're holding back, and this can even be if the timing doesn't feel right for something. You feel yourself like you keep like making up excuses why you haven't done something or you haven't made that phone call or sent that email or whatever. Take notice. This is your built-in emotional guidance system that is helping you to navigate that. That's taking leadership for yourself. That is owning the very signals that you are receiving. And that is its own level of craftsmanship. But all of this feels to me, because I'm, I'm caught with this, you know, idea around leadership and that we've got this one-one energy and this idea about this inner inspiration. And it could also be inspiration about how to bring greater order to people's lives that maybe hasn't, you know, and to your own life that hasn't been there before. But we can do that in new ways. It, this all feels new because, again, don't forget, volcanic eruption is this unrest that there has been a holding down of something and it cannot be held down anymore. It is ready to come forward and the perfection that Virgo is, where this new moon is, is calling you to this place that you can make this manifest. You can do this. You can take it, an idea, and you can break it down into little steps, little bits that lead you on your path, that send you forward, that make it manifest in your life. It doesn't, it goes from being an idea and it can be a totally crazy ass idea to something that is very real, even if it starts out as little baby steps. Okay? So again, very broad brush on these readings, but it's the best way that I can do it for a big audience like this. So the second card is the Rumi deck, and these are really beautiful and very deep cards. You have Star Mother Arrakis, number 23. Okay, here's the card. And I, I looked at this ahead of time because I wanted to see what, what part I doused with the guidebook 
um, to find out what wanted to come forward specifically for this general reading, okay? So I'm going to read you, I'm going to hold this up, and I'm going to read a couple of parts from the guidebook because, again, the authors and artist had um, very specific meanings in mind, and this is a deck that I like to honor some of that and then blend in my own intuitive reading on it. So this, um, the roomy passage is as follows for this card. Star Mother Arrakis, be the king who has made his own kingdom. Be the moon that has made her own summit. How much longer will you coo-coo like a pigeon? Empty your head of all mortal lusts and become life without breath. You will not call out for God anymore, for you have become immersed in God. And this already is giving me the feeling of there not being boundaries. They're not, they're not being, oh, I'm this kind of a person and somebody who is godlike or spiritual or what have you is over here. Again, think about this concept of bucketizing and how we hold ourselves back with all of these personality descriptors that we have put on ourselves and other people have put on ourselves, on us. Um, and what we do as a society even, that if you drive this kind of car, this is who you are, or if you have this kind of job, or you live in this town, or you're that sign, sun sign, or ugh, it's so limiting, you know? You're way more than that. Um, so then this paragraph wanted to come forward for you, okay? No matter how dark life on earth may seem at times, when we remember our holy heritage, we can also realize, ah yes, I am blessed, held as one with the mother, who shall not be deterred from great holy purpose. I shall prevail. I forgot that and feared. But now I remember, and I am determined once more. Then you shall feel joy and be inclined to dance, to sing, to make your art, and to live fearlessly once again. And when I was reading the Rumi part of that before, I was getting the sense of this, like, I want you to think about an infinity symbol. And sometimes, I mean, really for all of us, we pass through these cycles in our life where we kind of go into the muck a little bit and we kind of see what's there and there's such value in that. There is, I've just come out of a very heavy week of that myself and um, with my family and I, I, I see the, the tremendous value in it as I wake up and this is a new day and every day got a little bit better in that regard, that you, when you're in the muck, when you're down, consider it like you're down on the bottom of the ocean or in, you're in the very deep recess of the cave, you bring your light with you and all of you do, all of you do. You have to be sometimes in the dark to see your own potential to realize that I have what it takes to move beyond this. I will not let this be my final resting place. I have more to offer than that. But it, sometimes we have to get there, like with the infinity symbol, we, we have to kind of, maybe if I do it this way, like we have to kind of go down and then we bring that experience up and then we can shine ourselves in a new way because we have been to the extreme point. And again, I see this in astrology. It's why I've been doing these thread readings for the tapestry series. Um, those are available on my YouTube channel. It's a free exercise. Um, once you set up your own chart, it's all, that's all free. And it's a way to understand that we work with these polarities. This is Earth. We have two poles for our planet. <laughs> and so, and think about how much we describe everything in terms of light and dark, right and wrong, good and bad, black and white. We do that a lot. And I'm encouraging 
anyone who listens to my readings to see the value in both of them, but really see the value as you consider the infinity symbol and you're coming down in this, the back of the cave, you get the experience there, which is so valuable. You can't see your light unless you're in the dark. You can't see the quality of your light. And then you bring it back up and it, it's that overlap point that I'm really interested in for you. I'm really interested in how that crossover point happens that then you feel f this freedom to bring that part of yourself. We're renewing ourselves. Our bodies are literally renewing themselves every moment that we are alive. It is this renewal of cells and this regeneration effort that is happening. And I feel that intensely with this card because in the Rumi portion it talks about breaking out of being this or this and becoming immersed in all of what that is. And that's the crossover point that is the infinity. It, it's, it, that crossover point is this tremendous um, opportunity to come to a new level of understanding because it's that represents the integration point. I've come out of the cave and what have I learned? What are the gems that I have brought out of my search there? And even if we have a really generally happy life, I guarantee that you have moments where you're in the cave and it can be a solitary effort. Maybe you're just really, really off one day. Those are cave days and it's okay. It's building your light stronger. You, you cannot get a sense of that inner revelation and that inner wild power that exists within you. That's seeing the fire within. We can only really see it, the potency of it, when we're down in the muck. And when I was reading that second portion, that beginning part about, you know, we see these dark times but they don't last, and you know that. So if you have been in a dark time, this card is sort of calling you to a new place around all of that, that you realize it's just simply a cycle. Okay, I've been in the cave, and now I'm bringing it back, and I'm integrating that, and I'm remembering the gems that came out of that to then, you know, sort of spread my wings and open, because don't forget that energy of revelation, that's the 11, and then universal love, this opening to not being clamped down in a belief that just stays put. Nothing about this planet stays put. Nothing about humanity stays put. Ever. And I don't care what level of humanity and experience on this planet that you're talking about. Nothing remains stagnant. Everything is constantly turning over. And therefore, just in that cyclical process, there is a part that is down, and then there's a part that is up, and there's all of this renewal. So just don't, you know, think about with this new moon, if you're getting caught in one end of that infinity loop or the other, and realize that the, that, that downward motion is just as valuable as the upward freedom, pure shining, showing yourself out there. We really need both. They're, they're, it's a perfect system, really, if you think about it, because you're ever evolving. Just like when you're turning over compost, for some reason that's it's being given to me that way. When you're turning over compost, the point is you have to turn that around and it creates this beautiful um, material that then grows so much more from it, okay, becomes ultra, ultra fertile. Okay, the last card is from the um, Magdalene Oracle. Oh gosh, I feel Kuan Yin with this card. This is Sophia. So really for you, um, this is weighing heavily with that 9-9 nine, nine energy that I was describing for this new moon that's about universal love, ultimate trust, releasing personality, personality illusions, and the opening. 
because the beauty of the Sophia energy, and this is Kuan Yin to me, this hot pink color, um, she always comes through to me when I get this, is within the flower. And I want you to think about whatever this is for you. Some people really love rose. I want you to think about delicate. I always think about peonies, um, especially when I get this card. I want you to think about just the beauty of a flower in its delicate nature. And the absolute... In our human mind, we would view it if we were thinking about ourselves as a peony or a rose or what have you. Whatever you think about as a very delicate but just enormously beautiful flower, we would think about it in terms of the word courage. To be open, to be vulnerable. Like you think about the peony and really those petals do not remain in, once it blooms, they don't remain intact for very long. And it's kind of like the Luna Moth is also coming to me as an indication for this. The Luna Moth, I think it is, only lives for like a day. It, it, its whole lifetime is a day. I think that is correct. Um, in any case, it's a very short period of time. And so there is this just indication as humans, when we think about those concepts, we think about the courage it takes because they're, we're viewing it from, but the time is so limited and, and you are so gentle when you think about the, either of those concepts. A, a moth with these very gentle wings, you know, that seems so paper thin and the peony that just has all of these petals. It's so lush, but they're so succulent and soft and vulnerable. That word really wants to come up for this card. Um, and I'm resisting it because our humanness wants to see it that way. And we, when we think about ourselves in those terms, we want to use the words like vulnerability and it takes courage and but think about nature in those examples that I gave. The peony, you know, goes through this whole period. I've always been fascinated. The ants always are always walking around it and really helping it to flourish, to bloom. It is necessary. That whole process is a complete process within itself. And it's the same with the Luna Moth. Like it's built into its its evolution, its life cycle, that it's just simply the way it is. And so there is no, obviously, there, everything that is living has a consciousness to it. But this is where humanity can be so restrictive. We can be so restrictive on ourselves. It makes me very sad because our, our humanness, our ego wants so badly to bring structure to things and meaning and, and we get all this emotional baggage all connected to stuff and um, you know it's very much like being diagnosed with cancer which I was and there were many people who were, were extremely well-meaning who wanted to place meaning on top of me about what that is and you're gonna have to battle this and and this kind of woe is you kind of a feeling, very dark and heavy. And I mean, the courage was in me realizing that none of that was true for me. I'm saying this for me. And we all have to find that for ourselves, just like the Luna Moth does, and the Peony does, and a Rose does. There are cycles, but we, we have to really pay attention to the fact, are we putting baggage like hanging bags on a donkey you know are we adding baggage to something that is actually really beautiful and natural are we adding all of these qualifiers that say oh you have to have courage and oh you have to be a warrior and oh you're so vulnerable and I and therefore I feel so bad like we, when I use the word vulnerable, what does that trigger within, you know, you specifically? And what does it trigger within all of us? There is a tendency to want to be like, oh, 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 you know, sort of this 
oh it's a very like you poor thing kind of it's it's just the way it is with certain words we have emotion embedded within words and concepts it brings meaning and structure to our lives but Virgo is shaking all that up with this new moon we're talking about the symbol is a volcanic eruption Virgo is helping to shape shake up and blow up all of this in-depth meaning and and not helpful emotion <laughs> that drags us down it's like having a weight attached to your ankle you know and just being pulled down to the bottom of the pool and you you're trying so hard to get up but there's all this meaning that is draped all over it that's not helpful does it make you feel good to think about it's and it's think about the peony think about the luna it is this sense of the the pleasure and just grand abundance is what's coming forward in being able to open and to shine and to have flight for whatever period of time that is and there's no there's i mean i understand that those do not have an ego structure but what I'm saying here is, can you bring it down the way you really shake things up and make it a little bit more manageable? Because Virgo does like to have things kind of managed and it likes the bite-sized pieces. Can you bring this concept down to the momentary phase of your life? Can you, with this new moon, allow yourself to bring up in the moment think about that beautiful flower the luna moth maybe people don't think they're beautiful i think they are stunning um anything that you think of that has that seems limited that see that seems like it has a limited timeline think about people who do have a very serious diagnosis that's a human construct the vast majority of those people when something serious is going on boom the vast majority I'm not saying everybody wake up to the beauty of life and it becomes about the enjoyment of the moment the small small things having that delicious cup of tea seeing and experiencing the laughter of a grandchild how the luna moth is out and shining and just taking in the air and the flight and enjoying its beauty in the moment the peony gleaming you know opening as the sun comes out and the way oh think about it the way the rain looks on those petals as it just lightly falls down it's just and even in the falling of the petals that consciousness still loves its beauty and it appreciates the time that was the unfolding of what it was and that is the same for you it's it's a, this is a very rich energy for you with this new moon but it's shaking it up in the moments you need to get present and and just try your best to not get fixated into these concepts of oh I have to be a warrior on all these fronts or I have to you know I think about that I'm so vulnerable or that you know it's gonna take courage I always have to have this courage and and I'm so wounded and I had a bad childhood and if only you know this person or that person why did they do that to me and there's a sense of like this wounding this you know and it, we can look at like somebody who perhaps uh, is out naked you know it, sometimes this comes up in the tarot where you see a naked figure and people can think oh that poor thing she doesn't have any clothes and she must feel so you know targeted and you know just ugh, that must be horrible but perhaps it's all in your perception Perhaps that person is feeling the freest she ever has. Perhaps clothes are too binding for her 
um, shoes and socks and things like that are far too binding for her. That could very well be. So pay attention to that, okay? And try to get in the momentary awareness. Feel your beauty. Feel the opening in the moments, okay? So there we go, everybody. That is it. Make these intentions for your greatest achievement and for this exploration into higher levels of being that are really shaking up the roots to take you to a new level of mastery. Bye-bye for now.